All you need to do is just speak, Lord. We know that you're all powerful, God. You're the same God that speak to the wind and it ceased to blow. Lord, we know you're the same God that speak and men will lay down and die. But God, you have the power to speak and men will rise again. And for that, we love you, Lord, and we thank you. And Lord, all of our faith and all of our hope and all of our trust is in thee. Lord, speak in our lives, oh God. Give us all the things that we stand in need of according to your will. Father, move throughout this congregation right now, Lord. For you know, Lord, what the needs are. And you're able to do them right now, Lord. And Father, we ask that you would speak to this nation. Speak to this state. Speak in this city, oh God. For Lord, you have an answer. We hear, Lord. Then Lord, give us power and strength from on high to obey your word. And we be so ever careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And Lord, we ask, oh God, that you would speak through your servant this day the words that you would have us to hear. And then, Lord, let him deep down in the treasures of your word and give him power, Lord, to proclaim your gospel. And, Father, open up our ears that we might hear. For, Lord, we know you have the answer. And, Lord, we're listening right now. And your servants will obey. God, as we depart now, Lord, and go back to our seat, we claim the victory in the name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord. And we give you praise. And we give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go in peace. Go in peace. Go in peace. Amen. Knowing that God has heard your prayer. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to worship the Lord through giving. Amen. Amen. What a blessing it is to be able to worship him through giving. Amen. And we thank God for the members here who are faithful with the tithe and the offering. Amen. We have um, some faithful members who give a tithe and an offering. Uh, every time the Lord blesses them with a dollar, they give God a dime. Amen. Uh, that's 10%. And then um, even over and above. Amen. The tithe is what we owe. Yeah, that's that's non-negotiable. Amen. God has commanded us to give the tithe, uh, but the offering is what we sow. It's anything over and above the tithe that um, we desire to give to God simply to say, Lord, I love you. Amen. Amen. And uh, we finance the work of the ministry through tithes and offerings. We have no gimmicks. Amen. We have no sales. We have no fundraisers. We do it through the giving of tithes and offerings. Amen. That's the biblical, biblical way to finance the kingdom of God. And so we're praying for those of you that are not yet tithing. That's part of being a five-star member. We're going to be talking about that some more, being a five-star member. One of the part is sharing uh, my testimony and my resources with the kingdom of God. And so let's share. Let's give a tithe. Let's give an offering so that the work can continue to go forth even outside of these walls. Amen? Amen. Reverend James Bone is coming now. He's going to pray and a uh, blessing over this offering. Then we'll be in the hands of our ushers. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, right now we come before you again in your presence. 
in this house of grace, Lord. Lord, your word says you love a cheerful giver. Right now, Lord, we are asking that you humble us. Keep us in perfect peace. And bless each and every one of us, Lord, the one that have the gift and the one that is given. And bless each gift that has been given. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Morning, 8th Street. This is Kristen Scott with your morning announcements. Bible study has been canceled. We will resume following the summer break. The Consolidated Missionary Baptist State Congress of Christian Education will be in session from June, June the 6th through the 8th at First Baptist Main Street. The morning classes are from 8 a.m. to 1020 a.m and the evening classes are from 5 p.m. to 7.20 p.m. If you are interested in attending a class or need additional information, please contact Sister Sarah Cannon. ESNBC is registered for the session, so there will be no charge for our membership. Attention men, the disciple-making session will meet on Thursday, June the 8th at 6 p.m. in the fellowship hall. The sessions are based on the Bible and the book, Multiply by David Platt and Francis Chan. All men are invited to attend. Iron sharpens iron. Attention parents and students. All students are encouraged to please turn in your fourth nine-week report cards to Sister Shanetta Agnew. Be a part of ESNBC Vacation Bible School from June 12th through the 16th at 6 p.m. nightly. There are classes for all ages. The military ministry would like to encourage ESNBC members to send a card to our two servicemen. It's time for them to hear from us again. If you have family members who, will be who belong to the church and serve in the military, please give their name and address to Sister Ruth Chandler, Deacon Deotis Fleming, or Sister Easter Tucker. We want to send cards to them as well. This has been your morning announcements. Have an amazing week.
God is my everything. Good morning, church. You know, from time to time, all of us have self-doubt, including me. But the song that we're going to sing today wants you to remember. We 
told you we don't have a clue. We just depend on God. God please. It is on time. It is on time. It is Listen, way. just one more time. I don't know how. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know when it will be done. We already told you we don't have a clue. Drop me. to depend on God. For, 19, for 2017 say that every eight seconds a baby is born. Or should I say every eight, eight seconds a miracle takes place. As a matter of fact, in this church right here alone, two weeks ago the Jones family welcomed a beautiful baby girl. Tell me God ain't good. There may be some of you out there that are hoping or wishing for a miracle. But there's something that God requires of us. First, he requires us to be patient. He doesn't work in our time. He works on his own individual time when he gets ready. Another thing he requires is persistent prayer. He wants us to get on our knees and lift up our request to him. And the last thing, he wants us to have faith enough to believe that he's gonna do what he says he's going to do. Because God is still working miracles. Hallelujah. Thank you to the Lamb of God. Give God the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Still working miracles. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know when it shall be done, but I believe I shall be delivered in your own time and in your way. So now, Lord, I pray that you'll help us to keep the faith while we're waiting on our miracle. Now, Lord, it's preaching time, and I need you, oh God. 
I need you to touch me. I need you to strengthen me. I need you to take over me so that your word can be delivered to your people. Even use a broken vessel like me. To the end, I'll make sure I give your name the glory and praise. Now, may the words of my mouth and the, word, and the meditations of my heart be found acceptable in your sight. For the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my redeemer. And it is so in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. And amen. Come on, put your hands together if you love him. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. If you open your books, your Bibles to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13. As we mentioned on last week, we'll be starting a sermon series today. If you're there in Exodus chapter 13, say amen. amen. Join me in verse 16 and hear these words and it shall be for a token upon thine hand and for frontlets between thine eyes for by strength of the hand of the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God let them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall take my bones away hence with you. They took their journey from Succoth and encamped in Etham in the edge of the wilderness, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. I'm going to preach if I can with this title, I'm coming out of this. I'm, I'm coming out of this. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm coming out of this. <laughs> I've been in it for a while, but I'm coming out. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm coming, I'm coming out of this. There, there, there are some things that you can find yourself in that you can't get yourself out of. Am I right about it? The children of Israel were on lockdown. They were in the midst of more than 400 years of bondage to the Egyptians. All they knew was slavery. All they knew was oppression for generations upon generations. All they knew was persecution and pain. So if they were ever going to come out of the predicament that they found themselves in, they were not going to do it by their own power. 
are. <laughs> and, and that's why I flat foot shouted when I read the B part of verse 16. For it says, for by the strength of the hand of the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. <laughs> and the reason that makes Jamil happy is because when I look back over my life, I can recall some sticky situations and the only way that I got out was by the strength that was provided by the hand of the Lord. Now listen, I know I'm still in my introduction, but I need to take an inventory of the sanctuary. Is there anybody other than me that can testify that you've been in some stuff that only God could bring you out of? It was not your mama or your money. It was not your homies or your hookups. It was not your education or your sanctification. No, baby. The only way that you came out of that thing is because the hand of the Lord was strong enough to snatch you from the clutches of the enemy. Somebody was on their deathbed and the doctor said they done all that they could do. They shook their head and walked away and told your family to make funeral plans. But you're still here today because God was strong enough to snatch you up out of that thing. Somebody was in a bad relationship and you didn't have a, a sense enough to leave. Your nose was so wide open that you stayed with that low down dirty joker even though he was no good for you. Listen, you didn't leave but the hand of the Lord snatched you up out of that thing. Somebody was addicted to crack cocaine and that thing had a hold on you. You tried to quit time and time again but you kept finding yourself back at the crack house but you're sober today because the hand of the Lord snatched you out of that thing. There are some things that only God can bring you out of. If you feel what I'm saying, just wave at me and say, preach, boy. The children of Israel were on lockdown. They were in bondage for more than 400 years. But the text says it was the strength of the hand of the Lord that brought them out. And just in case you missed it in verse 16, if you go back to verse 9, it says, For with a strong hand hath the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Then in verse 11, it says, And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites. Then in verse 14, it says, The strength of the hand of the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. It's repeated it four times just in case you're a little slow they only came out because of the Lord and I'm a living witness that God will bring you out <laughs> oh yes he will <laughs> T -t -t tell somebody I'm coming out of this can, can, can I give you my first point here it is here it is uh, the first thing I want to show you in this text is um, a scenic route Say, say a scenic route. Um, Y'all are not going to like this, but I've got to keep it real. When God brings you out, he rarely uses shortcuts. <laughs> um, oftentimes, he takes you round grandma on them house. And, and y'all looking at me strong, so I'll show it to you in your Bible. Verse 17 says, And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines. That was near. For God said, Lest peradventure the people will repent when they see war, and when they see war going the easy way, they'll just go on back to Egypt. God did not lead them the shortest distance because if they went the shortest distance, that's where all of Egypt's military posts were located. And God knew that after 400 plus years of slavery, they did not 
have the mental fortitude to face war yet. They had just come out of bondage and they were not spiritually ready for a battle. God knew that at the first sign of resistance and adversity, then they would just go on back to Egypt. So he took them the long way around. It would have just made practical sense for them to just go straight down the main road, which runs through the land of the Philistine. But the road represented, watch this, the shortest distance. That, that road represented uh, the easiest distance. It was an easy to navigate road because it was well kept because it was a trade route. But instead of taking them that way, verse 18 says that God led them through the wilderness toward the Red Sea. It would have been easier, faster, and more convenient to just go down the main road. But God took them the scenic route through the desert wilderness. They probably did not understand why God didn't just bring them out the easiest, fastest, and most convenient way. But God knew something about that route that they did not know. God knew there was something in that route that would make them turn back from him they didn't know there was danger that way but God did there was some stuff on the easy route that would have led them back to a lifestyle of sin so he took them the long way listen listen there's some stuff on the easy route that'll get you there a little bit faster but God knows if you take the easy route there's some stuff that way that'll lead you to a lifestyle of sin. Somebody's looking at taking the easy route, but God says, I'm going to take you the long way. I'm going to take you the scenic route. And isn't that exactly how it is in our lives? He rarely takes us the way that we want to go. And this is only for the real people who can testify that pastor, I've been angry with God because he took me the long way around. Somebody's been praying for a husband for 10 years and you're wondering what's taking God so long. Listen, he has not forgotten you. He's just taking you the scenic route. If he had taken you the shortcut, you would have had a lifestyle of heartache and pain. And so God said, I'm not just going to give it to you right now. I'm going to take you the long way around. Listen, it's not happening in your time frame, but God is just taking you the scenic route. Somebody's watched all of your friends advance in their professional career and you're still waiting on your promotion. You feel like your breakthrough is long overdue. But don't you get discouraged because sometimes God takes his time. Watch this. Sometimes he does things suddenly and other times he does things slowly. But whether he does them suddenly or slowly, he's still an old time God. Oh yes he is. And that's the reason the old folks used to sing. He may not come when you want him but he's always on time and y'all know the new school remix of that don't you he may come when you want him but you're gonna show up want him when he shows up when he takes you the scenic route even when it takes the long way God is still on time God brought them out but he didn't use a shortcut took them the scenic route. Can, can I give you my second point? Not only do I see a scenic route, I also see a spiritual reminder. Um, I'm in verse 19 now. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. Um, jo Joseph made his brothers swear saying, God is going to visit you. God's going to deliver you. But he made them promise. He said, when God takes you out of here, take my bones with you. <laughs> uh, before Joseph died, he made his brothers promise that when God delivered Israel from Egypt, 
He said, don't leave my bones in a land of bondage, but take my bones to the promised land with you. Watch this, watch this. Joseph was never buried. If you read the 50th chapter of Genesis, you'll discover he was never buried, but his bones stayed above ground in a coffin for more than 400 years as a spiritual reminder that God was going to deliver Israel from bondage and lead them to the promised land. Now that God was bringing them out, the first thing that Moses grabbed was Joseph's bones. Him grabbing the bones were not just him keeping a promise to Joseph, but Joseph's bones served as a reminder that God is faithful to keep his promise. As long as God said, I'm coming out of this, it doesn't matter how long it takes me to come out. Joseph bones were a spiritual reminder that you may have to go through some stuff but if you hold on God will do just what he said he's going to do please don't miss this these were Joseph's bones same Joseph that was favored by his father the same Joseph that was hated by his brothers. The same Joseph that had a dream. The, the same Joseph that was thrown in a pit and then sold to Potiphar and then locked up in prison. These were Joseph's bones. Okay, y'all missed it. These were the bones of the same boy who was the favorite of his daddy, hated by his brothers, but he had a dream anyway. The, these were the bones of the same boy who transitioned from the pit to Potiphar's house to prison, but that's not how his story ends. After the pit and after Potiphar's house and after prison, he still ended up in the presidential suite of the palace. In other words, the original dream that God gave him still came to pass but it didn't come to pass until he went through some stuff God kept his promise but his promise did not exempt Joseph from some pain so his bones were a spiritual reminder that they could look at Joseph's coffin and say if God brought Joseph out even though we've been locked up for a long time he can still bring us out Joseph's bones were a reminder that if God, that if God did it before he can do it again and every now and then you just need a reminder that God can perform an encore every now and then you just need a reminder that the same God that did it last time is still big enough and bad enough to do it this time same God that delivered my mama and daddy from Jim Crow and the cotton fields is able to prosper me even with Donald Trump in the White House. The same God. If he did it before. Sometimes all you need is a good memory. <laughs> because if you just have a memory... <laughs> You can just recall some stuff that you never thought that you would get out of, but you're still here today because the same God who did it then is still sitting on the throne right now. How many of you can thank God for a good memory? <laughs> how, how many of y'all have ever had a Holy Ghost flashback? Listen, listen, every time I think, I start thanking him. I anybody want to thank God for some spiritual reminders? Listen, whenever I hear about somebody who's having heart problems, I just look at Deacon Ivory Cannon uh, who had open heart surgery a few years ago and I'm reminded that God is a heart fixer. Whenever I hear about somebody who has cancer, I just look at Pam Farrell or, or Tracy Hurd or, or Deacon Mitchell or, or any of these folk in here that's been delivered and I'm reminded that God is bigger than cancer. 
cancer. Whenever I hear about somebody that's in trouble with the law, I just look at Reverend Al J. Spencer or Reverend James Bone or somebody else that's been locked up. And I remember that God is a lawyer in the courtroom. Whenever I look at somebody who is toe up from the flow up, I don't have to look at anybody. I just look in the mirror and I'm reminded that I serve a God who can pick you up, <laughs> turn you around, place your feet on solid ground. Somebody just needs to thank God for spiritual reminders. You may be in bondage, but the God of the mountaintop is also the God of the valley. And he's able to bring us out whenever he gets good and ready. I, I might be down, but God is able. T tell somebody I'm coming out of this. Uh, the scenic route, a uh, spiritual reminder. One more. Y'all tired of me. I'm going to let y'all go. Uh, uh, a sacred refuge. Uh, the text says, the text says, the nation was guided by a pillar of cloud by day. And then it became a pillar of fire by night. Is that in your Bible? If you read verse 20, it says, the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way and by night in a pillar of fire to lead the way. I need you to see this sacred refuge. A, a refuge is a protection. A refuge is a shelter. Um, 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 uh, you, you seek refuge during stormy times. God is now covering them and leading them in a tangible way. In verse 21, I love it because it says, He never took the pillar of cloud away from them. Um, um, they experienced, watch this, a 20 Four, seven, refuge. And according to Numbers chapter 12, verse 5 and 6, God spoke to his people through this pillar. And if you're going to come out of whatever you're in, you're going to need God to speak to you. Can, can I get one witness? I'm so glad that I serve a God that will speak to me. He'll, he'll speak to me through his word. He'll, he'll speak to me through his preacher. He'll speak to me through that still, small voice. I, anybody glad God will speak to you? But, but not only did the pillar speak to them, it also shielded them. <laughs> I'm about to get happy all by my dog old self. The, the pillar of cloud shielded the people from the hot sun as they journeyed by day. It shielded them. It sheltered them. It secured them. They were not scorched by the hot sun in the desert because the pillar of cloud was covering them. The shield protected them from what would have harmed them. In the daytime, it was a cloud, and at nighttime, it became a fire. Okay, okay. I said in the daytime, it was a cloud, and at nighttime, the cloud became a fire. Um, 72 of y'all still not with me, but they tell me the third time is a charm. Um, um, I'm just talking about this sacred refuge. In the daytime, it was a pillar of cloud. And at nighttime, there was a shift. And it became a pillar of fire. 
So not only did God speak to them and shield them, he also chaperoned them. And if you're in bondage and you want to be delivered, you're going to need a chaperone. You're going to need a supervisor. You're going to need an escort. You're going to need a chauffeur. You, you don't have sense enough to know where to go on your own. So you need a chaperone. And the Bible says that the pillar of fire by night provided light for the journey. I'm talking about a chaperone. Somebody that will supervise me while I'm coming out. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. It it tells me which way to go. It leads me along the way. He's my chaperone. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I've got a chaperone. Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and he that follows me will never walk in darkness. I've got a chaperone. And watch this. Whenever the cloud moved, the camp moved. And whenever the cloud stopped, the camp stopped. Signifying unto us that if you're going to come out of this, you need to move at the Lord's pace. You can't get ahead of God. And you can't get behind God, but you got to stay under the shadow of the pillar that he has provided to chaperone you. Here's what God says. When I move, you move. Somebody say just like that. It gets dark sometime, but my chaperone provides me with light. It gets dangerous sometime, but all night and all day... The angels, I'm telling y'all, I got a chaperone. The angels keep a watching over me. Anybody glad that God is shielding you? Anybody glad that God is covering you? Anybody glad that God is protecting you? You've got a sacred refuge. Tell somebody I'm coming out of this. You're coming out. I know it's been a while. I know you're wondering when God's going to snatch you out of this thing. But you serve a God of deliverance. I, I said you serve a God of deliverance. The choir just told you that God is still working miracles. And I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know where. But I'm believing God for my deliverance in his own time. Guess what? You serve a God of deliverance. Y'all not getting it. You serve a God of deliverance. The three Hebrew boys were locked up in the fiery furnace. But they all three of them came out. Daniel was locked up in a lion's den all night long. But he came out. Jonah was locked up in the belly of a whale. But he came out. Lazarus was in the grave for four days. But when Jesus showed up, he came out. Paul and Silas were in a Philippian jail. But at midnight, they came out. And one Friday, Jesus was placed in a borrowed tomb. But early Sunday morning, he came out with all power in his hands and if you are a child of God there's nothing that you can find yourself in that you can't get out of tell somebody I'm coming out but pastor 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 what about the challenges that I'm going to face while I'm coming out. Uh, you, 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 you do know that whatever's been holding you is not going to let you go without a fight, don't you? You, you, you do know that the devil ain't just going to let you skip out. 
So, so pastor, tell me about the challenges that I might have to face as I come out. We out of time today, but if you come back next week. If you come back next week. We'll pick up right there. We'll pick up right there. About the challenges when you come out. Stand, stand where you are. 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 Listen. Listen. If you're here today, if you're here today, because Jesus was locked up from Friday to Sunday, and he came out, because of that, you can come out. If you're here today and you don't know him, we want to offer Christ to you. Wherever you are, wherever, whatever you've done, no matter how long you've been in it, you can come out if you give your life to him. So we want to offer Christ to you. If you've never given him your life, now is your time. This moment is specially reserved for you to give him your life. Maybe you've already given him your life, but you're looking for a church home. If you're looking for a church home, the door of our church is open. Whosoever will, let them come. Maybe you're in transition and you have a church home, but you can't get there every Sunday. And you want to unite with a place until you can get home. We call that watch care. You can join my watch care. Now is the acceptable time. If you need prayer, our ministers are standing at this door. They'll pray for you. But these chairs are for three invitations. If you need to know Jesus, if you're looking for a church home, you want to unite by watch care. The choir will sing. The invitation is extended. Come at this time. God's able to do just what he said he would do.